Hello everyone, this is Spencer Curran with OnlineChessLessons.net. Today we'll be going more in depth in a specific variation of the French defense. Uh, this is the uh, Steinitz variation of the classical French. So 1e4, e6, d4, d5. Here white plays knight to c3. Um, black could play the winner, bishop to b4, but that's a, a very different line. Might cut come across that in another video. Here is knight to f6, and white here has two main options. The first is bishop to g5. Um, this leads to its own set of theory, including uh, very complicated lines like the Aliakin Chatard attack. So that also is not going to be the focus of this video. This video is going to be about the Steinitz variation where white plays e5. So here, black's knight is under attack, so he has to move it. Knight f to d7. Um, some white players uh, at a lower level will play knight f3. Uh, this is generally a bad move because they're going to have a very hard time defending the center. Eventually, uh, black will play f6 and white center will be destroyed. So white has to play f4 here. Now black tries to attack white center with c5. White defends. Black continues to attack. Now white has to play bishop to e3, defending this pawn yet again. Black plays queen queen to b6. Now this is a double attack. It's attacking the d4 pawn. But it's also attacking the undefended pawn on b2. So... Uh, white has a couple options here. I mean, he can just move the rook over, or he can uh, he can play a few other lines that try to trap the queen if the queen takes this pawn. But the line I want to focus on is knight to a4. This attacks the queen. It also defends the b2 pawn. It attacks the c5 pawn. It opens up the c3 square for this pawn to move forward, bolstering the center even further. Um, black will play queen to a5 check. This looks like a fork winning the knight, but it's not. Because once white plays c3, this pawn here, the queen is now defending the knight, so it can't be taken. And now we have to deal with the tension between c5 and d4. You can see that, I mean, white might, black might have the idea of trying to trap the knight at some point and playing b5, but that doesn't work here because white can simply capture here and, you know, this doesn't work for black. Uh, white has too many attackers on c5. So black can't do that quite yet. Normally black will take on d4. Now it's very important to note that white can't just recapture here. Uh, let's say white, I mean white can't recapture with the C pawn, that's not legal, that pawn is pinned. Let's say white recaptures with the knight. Then black can just play knight takes, bishop takes, b5, and now this knight is lost. It can't retreat, the c3 and b2 pawns are blocking it. It can't go here because there is a knight and a bishop attacking that, and only a bishop defending. So white is losing a piece if he does that, so he can't capture back like that. So white might try bishop takes. Well, this also is going to end up losing material. Um, And now the knight can't escape. You know, maybe b4, but then you know, black is still going to be up a lot of material. So white cannot capture this d4 pawn right away. What he has to do is play pawn to b4, attacking the queen, in order to get the queen off of this square. So black has two main options here. Um, 
first off, he can, he could easily just retreat to c7, say, and then black will take back and uh, and then this is a fairly even position for the middle game. Uh, the emphasis for both sides will be on trying to uh, deal with the center here. Black will be trying to undermine this f4 and e5 pawns. Black will be trying to defend it. One option for black might be an immediate g5 here. This looks pretty ugly, but it actually turns out that it works okay. If white takes, then black captures here, and he's succeeded in uh, take, destroying white's center. Now the problem for black is that you can see that there's a giant hole in his kingside, so kingside castling might not be the safest bet anymore. But he has a good center. Um, this d pawn is actually passed already. You can see that there's no pawn standing in its way. So this could be a good end game for black. The other option for black, instead of retreating the queen, is to play knight takes b4. This is a very interesting and aggressive line. So then obviously white will recapture. Black plays bishop takes b4 check. Black will block the check while getting his bishop out of um, the line of this pawn. Bishop takes. White can't play queen takes bishop because that would hang the knight over here. So he has to play knight takes. All right, and this is basically where the opening theory ends. And here we're sort of in a middle game, end game position where we can see how the game's going to run out. Uh, Black has traded a knight for three pawns. And that makes this game very interesting and dynamic with, some, uh, with a lot of possibilities for both sides. Uh, the main thing will be can white stop black's extra pawns? And if so, white will end up winning. But these pawns are very dangerous in the meantime. So black's going to play, you know, f6. White's probably going to play, you know, bishop to e3. White will probably cast. Black and white will probably both castle. And then the game will proceed from here. And it it becomes a matter of trying to get these pawns to advance. So that's a little bit more detail uh, on how to play the black side of the French classical Steinitz variation. Uh, I'll be posting some later videos on other lines in the French and my recommendations for black. Until then,